Now on Xbox Game Preview, Grounded may not immediately seem a technical tour de force, but there's a lot going on under the hood to make it one of Xbox One's most taxing games. Which is a surprise because on the surface, the idea behind Grounded is, well, really quite simple. You play as one of four teenagers who are shrunk to the size of an insect. Waking up in a giant suburban garden, you need to survive against fatigue, hunger, dehydration, and of course, spiders as day turns to night. You gather resources to craft tools, weapons, and eventually a base to protect yourself from the elements. It's all built on Unreal Engine 4.2 and so already, parallels can be drawn to Ark Survival Evolved. Grounded's visual style is more playful though, charming, like a CG Nickelodeon animation turned to a 4 player online survival game. Look closer still and it's pushing the engine and Xbox and PC hardware to extremes you wouldn't expect. How do Xbox machines compare then, and how close does X get to matching PC's epic settings? Let's put Grounded under the microscope to find out. At the heart of Grounded's appeal is its world, a jumbo sized garden to carve your own path in. Developer Obsidian's always excelled here, from Fallout New Vegas to South Park Stick of Truth to The Outer Worlds, the studio has a huge talent in crafting unique backdrops to its stories. But this one's a little different. The story is less of a focus overall, delivered with voiceover quips from the cast, and framed by missions like inspecting a mysterious machine. All this simply spurs you on to survive, find blueprints to new tools, build axes, spears, and hammers to complete quests. Each mission does a great job of making you slowly peel at the layers of its crafting system. I suppose the easiest way to describe its gameplay loop is something akin to No Man's Sky, where you need X resource to get to Y before you can build item Z. For example, the first task is to get three laser beams to hit this machine, but to clear the path for the laser, you need to build an axe to chop down obstructing grass. To build that axe, you need resources, and so on. It's all clearly laid out in the menus, and I found it addictive in that there's progress at every turn. This is all still in beta, an early access, but already it's polished enough to enjoy. Obviously, it's worth saying before we get to the technical points, a lot can change. We've also yet to see a range of locations later on, swamps and beaches promised among them, and the story set to evolve with time. Regardless, Grounded's opener in the garden is an amazing showcase of what Unreal can push in scale and the sheer density of objects. Managing level of detail and minimizing pop-in for such a complex scene was an issue Ark Survival battled with. Every giant blade of grass, every insect has to be rendered far, far into the distance with no easy occluders like buildings to hide any drop off in detail. The macro level scale is what makes Grounded shine. Combine this with the high quality of materials, more on this later, their destructible nature and a dynamic time of day, and there's a lot going on. Looking at Xbox One X here first, there's a lot of highlights. Light shafts flicker through the reeds. We have dynamic shadows stemming from every object, updating slowly as the sun rises and falls. A strong bokeh depth of field effect also flanks the garden basin, blurring a house nearby to create a tilt shift photography look. Now this tilt shift effect is a basic post-processing technique for Unreal. It's achieved in this case by creating an extremely shallow depth of field and, well, it ends up emphasizing the small proportions of the player and the environment. It's really what helps create the illusion that everything is so tiny. On PC, it can be switched off entirely by finding the .ini file and dropping post-processing to zero, but really, I'd keep it since it's such a defining point of the visuals. The materials in Grounded also have to get a big mention. Foliage across the world uses complex shaders, creating a rich, glossy look without appearing overly plastic. They're stand out for one other major reason though, translucency. Every clover leaf allows sunlight to permeate through to the other side, creating a filtered color. Whether it's an orange tinge from direct sunlight or just a light and green, it all has an effect. Even shadow outlines are visible from the underside of each leaf and again, it creates this incredible sense that you're under a blanket of green. It's similar to the subsurface scattering techniques used to present skin in other games, where layers of the skin's surface let light break through. We see a form of this in Grounded, in fact, on our character's hands as he jumps, 
a kind of red tinge on the backside of his hands as the sun projects light through it. Really impressive stuff. Now, there are downsides to its presentation on Xbox One X and S, but still, there's a lot to enjoy in close-up. Even the high-quality glass on the electronics kit here reflects nearby elements and shadows, while still offering an opaque enough material to see through to the circuit. I wonder if ray tracing could ever be applied here, at huge cost I might add, to a game like this. There's a lot of potential here. The focus on physical accuracy does seem a major point for Obsidian with Grounded's world, and it'll be interesting to see it develop. Clearly, rendering such a massive area is no small feat. So how do the games compare, and does the base Xbox One fall too far behind in its delivery? Well, the game's listed as optimised for Xbox One X on Microsoft's site, but to cut to the chase, performance does struggle on every system I've tested. Even PC, in fact. My GTX 1080 Ti machine paired with a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X struggles on maxed epic settings, with drops under 60fps and even below 50 at points. We have four basic presets with little to customise directly. To go any deeper, you'll have to mess with the values for shadows, post-processing and more in a .ini file. In the future, I hope proper customised options will be integrated into the menus, but at least it's all here. One thing is clear though, playing at epic settings at even 1080p does cause my system to struggle to hold 60fps. No wonder then that consoles do have to prune back some settings to keep it ticking along. Comparisons first, Xbox One S versus X here, and honestly the differences are limited to only a few areas. Resolution is 1. On Xbox One I've noticed a typical resolution of 1600 by 900 with some results coming in at 810p, though the scene is a challenging one to pixel test. At least 900p is the typical result from most samples though. The surprise is Xbox One X support doesn't push too much harder here, it simply bumped up to 1920 by 1080 and so far that's pretty much it. Looking to the skies or around basic hubs, even the overlays and menus render at 1080p on both consoles. Again, this is an early access so maybe we'll get a little more from X in the future. Running the same routes side by side, it's clear a lot of other visual settings are the same. Textures and even an isotropic filtering are in the same ballpark across the ground. As for draw distances, you'll see shadow map popping occurs at the same range, along with small decals on rocks. It all draws in at the same point. I've got to say, I was surprised by this at first. X doesn't push too much further in rendering the scene at range at all. There are some small differences in post-processing quality, the depth of field effect appears slightly sharper on X, but otherwise, the core visual features are too subtle to split them. For the most part, expect a clearer image on X thanks to the higher pixel count. The biggest benefit is in frame rate though, which I'll get to in a moment. Where does Xbox One stand then next to PC? Well, the settings on PC, from low to epic, do have some scalability to ease the burden on GPUs. If we compare these two extremes, you can really see draw distances are the most affected, and that kind of makes sense. It's a hugely complex environment, and so reining in the distance that shadows render in, for example, makes a big difference. There are four presets for shadows, post effects, and so on too, but in practice, well, there is a boost for shadows on Epic, but it's nothing earth shattering this close up. Maxing out settings sorts those pop in issues we see on Xbox machines, it's all drawn in from far, far away. Based on testing, Xbox One S and X appear to come closest to the medium settings here. It's a middle ground that keeps the integrity of the world, but alas, even on this, it's still a huge demand on PC hardware. So to performance next, and where better to begin than the base Xbox One? I think the part that stands out most here is that, well, the frame rate is fully v-synced and also unlocked. Generally speaking, it's working between 30 to 35 FPS. In practice, though, you can hit much higher numbers by looking right up at the sky, avoiding too much GPU strain. Either way, it goes without saying, this game would benefit from a 30 FPS cap. Something to just fix the performance level at a stable 30, which it can achieve, mostly anyway, and level the frame time reading on left at 33.3 milliseconds. There is a downside, I have noticed spots in the game which go under 30fps, just. 
Bizarrely, it's around the mysterious machine in the garden center, but especially at night. Nighttime play drops performance overall on both Xbox One machines, and even X shown here. It's for reasons that aren't quite clear. Perhaps it's the higher number of spiders, or possibly the use of the torch to light your way through ants' nests. These are often large, complex enemies that might be pushing the machine harder. It is unexpected though, given how much of the environment is hidden by darkness. Either way, Xbox One S and X each have their own issues, but I will say as daytime returns, the enhanced console has a big advantage. It's hitting and, at times holding, 60 FPS for long stretches. Xbox One X, it must be said, is the clear choice of the two. Obsidian has chosen to leverage that extra power into smoother frame rates, rather than pushing for better visuals or higher resolutions. The payoff though isn't quite ideal. You do get to 60 FPS, yes, but as we've seen, it can drop to the 30 FPS line and even just under for nighttime play. Lots of play will unfold at numbers in between, and so really there's a vast range to X's frame rate that could also benefit from the same 30 FPS cap in theory. It's for sure one that would benefit seeing as there's a huge range it can jump between right now. Still, of the two, this is clearly the better way to play. Granted, to performance in early access is a tricky point, but regardless, I love the concept enough to enjoy it. With a little tightening up and perhaps a 30 FPS cap for the base machine, we could see it turn around. Though there's no denying the world it's trying to render is a complex one, and one that even PCs wrestle with. As another use of Unreal Engine, it's an experiment, if a demanding one, that's paying off with some wonderful visual effects, the materials being a high point, alongside the sheer scale of the sandbox. It's also hard not to mention the potential payoff we might see for next-gen machines, where the scale of this idea might finally meet hardware that can handle it at 60fps, but we'll have to wait and see. For now, Grounded is well worth checking out, not just for its tech, but also the rewarding rhythm of its play. But that's all from me today. If you did find this analysis useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get this video at high quality, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.